We are kicking off with SmackDown, where Randy Orton was attacked by Kevin Owens backstage, though the footage shared showed Orton already on the ground after being assaulted. In newly released security footage, fans can see Owens and Orton seemingly having a conversation before the prize fighter attacked his friend with a vicious assault. Several people rushed to pull Owens off Orton, but the damage was already done as WWE officials struggled to stop Owens' chaotic beatdown on the Viper. This attack comes after Owens assaulted Cody Rhodes after Bad Blood 2024, which, like the Orton attack, happened out of the ring as the Canadian has ditched his former allies. It remains to be seen how WWE will handle this latest attack and what punishments could be in store for Kevin Owens, who has been fined and suspended in the past. What we do know is that without Owens, Orton needed some new allies for WWE's live event in Cardiff, Wales, where he took on the Bloodline in six-man tag team action. In a surprising moment, Orton joined forces with DIY, who have had their own issues with the Bloodline, to take on Tama Tonga, Tongaloa, and Jacob Fatu. While it's uncertain if this trio will become a regular fixture on TV, Orton may need the support of DIY to continue his battle against the Bloodline, especially with Kevin Owens' recent betrayal. Fans will have to stay tuned to see if RK DIY becomes an official on-screen unit, as WWE often uses live events to test ideas they later implement on TV. Speaking of TV, tonight's episode of Raw was filmed last week in the US due to the WWE's UK tour and will feature matches and segments that took place after the October 7th show. But do you think Randy Orton and DIY should officially team up to take on the Bloodline? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, Bobby Lashley didn't appear at AEW Wrestle Dream as many expected he would, and his absence from Swerve Strickland's segment has led to questions about his AEW status. In an update, Fightful Select confirmed that Lashley has indeed signed on the dotted line and is a part of AEW, and there were discussions to have him debut at the latest pay-per-view. Those plans changed, partly because AEW felt like the idea of having Lashley debut by laying out Swerve would have been a bad call in Strickland's hometown of Tacoma, Washington. Given that fellow Washingtonian Brian Danielson was laid out in the main event of the show, AEW felt like having two home state wrestlers beaten up would not have gone down well at all. Earlier reports indicate that Lashley's debut was postponed to make sure it stands out as AEW felt Wrestle Dream already had big enough storylines and angles without him. AEW didn't want Lashley's arrival to get lost in the shuffle, but as things stand, his debut is expected to happen in the coming weeks where he will likely align with the Hurt Syndicate. The group already consists of MVP and Shelton Benjamin, and the powerhouse trio is expected to make waves in AEW, similar to what they did during their dominant days in WWE. What do you think of Bobby Lashley heading to AEW? Do you think Tony Khan should have instead built his own stars within the company? Let us know in the comments. Now, the return of Uncle Howdy to WWE was a highly anticipated moment after WrestleMania 40 as it brought back an intriguing character whose role in WWE had been in flux. Ever since the tragic passing of Bray Wyatt, there had been questions about Uncle Howdy, but shortly after the April PLE, the seeds were planted for a return to programming. This comeback coincided with the remnants of a group Wyatt himself was supposed to lead, but while the Wyatt Six burst onto the scene to upend Raw, their handling has been inconsistent. With other angles taking up more focus, it appears Triple H may have given up on Uncle Howdy for a variety of reasons. For one thing, the Wyatt Six has been around since late spring if you include the teases for the group, but since then, the group has had just three matches. Uncle Howdy himself, as played by Bray Wyatt's brother Bo Dallas, has only had one singles contest, that being against Chad Gable, and the group has been wholly absent from PLEs. Bad Blood was WWE's seventh PLE since WrestleMania 40, though it's arguable that Triple H sticking to five match cards may be why they haven't been featured at these events. With such short cards, WWE officials are trying to keep one or two big matches to sell episodes of SmackDown and Raw, which is where Uncle Howdy's feuds have been saved. This booking strategy affects about 75% of the roster outside of the champions, and even some title holders like mid-card and tag team champions don't get regular booking on this year's PLEs. Not only is Howdy being kept off of PLEs, but there seems to be a lack of long-term direction for him, in stark contrast to other prominent names and groups in WWE. While top storylines involving the Bloodline, The Judgment Day, Drew McIntyre, and CM Punk have been planned for months, even years in advance, the same can't be said for the Wyatt Six. 
Sure, the faction has a mission statement, making those who turned on family pay, but other than that, the group has no long-term direction discernible to fans. Does the group covet gold? If not, then why are they even competing in matches? Or are they simply satisfied with doling out what the group perceives as justice? Chasing a title allows bookers to plan things out, and if that's what the group was building towards, they could leave subtle clues warning that champion before unleashing their assault. With no PLE plans and no long-term direction, it's also hard to ignore that the group is now barely on TV, and vanishing from screens usually happens when a star isn't in a weekly feud. The Wyatt Six were introduced via pre-taped videos and followed those up with one of the most memorable debuts in WWE history, but things have taken a turn. Now the group has appeared almost as many times in those videos as they have live on Raw, and while it keeps them relevant, it's hard to ignore that they're not actually at shows. With Raw moving to a two-hour format, they may be used even less as the brand has four champions and occasionally five with Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill, who all need TV time. But perhaps the most obvious sign that Triple H has given up on the Wyatt Six is the fact that since arriving, the group has been pitted solely against mid-carters. Think back to The Shield's 2012 debut, where they attacked John Cena and Ryback in a main event title match against then-WWE champion CM Punk. The match instantly showed the group was to be taken seriously, and when the Wyatt family arrived in 2013, they targeted Kane, a name long established as one of WWE's top stars. Instead, the Wyatt Six has set its sights far lower on the card, first targeting Chad Gable for his mistreatment of his family at the time in the Alpha Academy. While it worked because Uncle Howdy was an intriguing character, he is not on the level of The Fiend, and with Gable dealt with, Uncle Howdy is targeting The Miz. The Wyatt Six and Uncle Howdy would have more credibility if they went after Seth Rollins, Braun Breaker, or Bronson Reed, and this issue isn't solely with this group. The Pure Fusion Collective has little to no credibility through no fault of their own, as they were booked to attack Kachana Chance and Zelina Vega instead of Rhea Ripley or someone higher up in the food chain. Hopefully, the Wyatt Six can revitalize their credibility as right now, there's no shortage of signs that Triple H and his creative team have already moved on from the group. In the main event of Wrestle Dream, Brian Danielson lost the AEW World Championship to Jon Moxley and also ended his lengthy career as a full-time wrestler. Danielson had said that he'd wrap up his full-time career in the ring when he lost the AEW World title, and the American Dragon had plenty to say over what happened in Tacoma, Washington. According to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, Brian Danielson specifically requested to lose to Jon Moxley and bring his full-time run to an end at AEW Wrestle Dream. Fightful adds that Danielson's full-time career is effectively over, but AEW is hopeful he'll compete periodically when he feels ready and resume other responsibilities. There was speculation about whether his comments about his health, including believing neck surgery will come this year, were just for the new storyline, but sources confirmed that they are real. By the time of the match against Moxley, Danielson felt he might have overexerted himself in the matches leading up to the Wrestle Dream pay-per-view. Regarding his contract, Danielson has been working without an official deal for several months and at this time has no non-wrestling contracts to his name. That means Danielson is a free agent without any commitments to AEW, though fans eager to see Daniel Bryan in next year's Men's Royal Rumble match may be disappointed. Danielson doesn't envision himself going back to WWE, and even if he did, his first point of order is to address his neck issues through surgery. Danielson's final match as a full-time wrestler not only saw him lose, but he was also betrayed by Wheeler Yuta, who suffocated his former mentor with a plastic bag. In fan-recorded footage, Yuta was making his way through the crowd with Claudio Castagnoli, and fans made their views very clear on Wheeler after his heel turn. Fans proceeded to cuss him out and flip him off as the treacherous Yuta left, and it was also evident that he and Castagnoli were not exactly on the same page. Hopefully we'll get answers about Yuta's betrayal this Wednesday on Dynamite, but for now, don't expect Brian Danielson back in the ring anytime soon. At Wrestle Dream, Will Ospreay not only lost the AEW International Championship, but was betrayed by Kyle Fletcher, who confirmed his loyalty to the Don Callis family. According to Fightful Select, Will Ospreay will not be appearing on the October 16th episode of AEW Dynamite, as he recovers and sells the injuries he sustained at the pay-per-view. It'll be interesting to see how the Ospreay vs. Don Callis family feud develops in the coming weeks, especially as we get closer to next month's Full Gear event. Did you ever expect to see Kyle Fletcher betray Will Ospreay like this at AEW Wrestle Dream? Let us know in the comments section below. 
Wrestle Dream saw Jack Perry retain the TNT Championship against Katsuyori Shibata, but a post-match attack on the Japanese star was cut short by an appearance from Daniel Garcia. Garcia was interrupted by the returning MJF, and while these two have a history as recent as last month's All Out, Garcia's future will see him focus on something other than the scumbag. According to Fightful Select, Daniel Garcia is expected to be factored into the TNT title picture following Wrestle Dream, as AEW clearly has big plans for the young star. During his return to programming, Garcia said he was coming for anybody in AEW who holds a championship title, and that is certainly the case according to this report. It's been reported that Garcia's new contract is a three-year deal with a hefty raise in salary, further solidifying the fact that Garcia is seen as the future of AEW by those backstage. We'll have to see if Garcia is the one who dethrones Jack Perry, as alongside his new contract, a win over the Elite member would only further show that he is a top name in AEW going forward. Do you believe that Daniel Garcia will become the TNT Champion by the end of this year? Let us know in the comments section below. At Wrestle Dream, Adam Cole made his return in the post-TNT title match storyline, and his presence alone was enough to send MJF running from a potential confrontation. Fans quickly noticed that Cole was running without any issues and wasn't sporting a protective boot on his foot in what many took as a positive sign about his health. According to Fightful Select, Cole, who's been out for over a year with an ankle injury, has officially been cleared to return to the ring in huge news for fans of the former NXT champion. As we stated, Wrestle Dream also saw the return of MJF, who had been absent since AEW All Out, working on projects outside of the squared circle. MJF has been filming a substantial role in Netflix's Happy Gilmore 2, and while he was at Wrestle Dream, his work on the project is not over yet. Fightful Select reports that MJF was informing people backstage at Wrestle Dream that he would be heading back to film more scenes for the comedy film after the event. That may keep MJF from Adam Cole's clutches for the meantime, but a match is clearly in the works for the former tag team partners, who are poised to be the fiercest of rivals. Cole hasn't competed in the squared circle for a long time, but with his return to TV and him being cleared, expect him back in the ring, likely against MJF, sooner rather than later. AEW Wrestle Dream also saw the World Tag Team titles on the line as the Young Bucks retained their gold against Private Party in a hard-fought match. At times, Private Party came very close to dethroning the AEW EVPs, and that's what should have happened according to some within the company. According to Fightful Select, many people backstage there were pushing for Private Party to win, a victory that would have marked the pair's first title since joining AEW five years ago. On Twitter, the Bucks responded to the report by borrowing a line from Hulk Hogan by stating, That doesn't work for us, brother, suggesting they flexed creative control for the finish. The Bucks have held the gold since Dynasty in April and hold the record for the most days as champion, and it remains to be seen who can part the EVPs from the AEW World Tag Team titles. Trademark news now as WWE often seeks full ownership of terms they use on TV and merchandise, and now two popular nicknames have been filed for. On October 11th, WWE filed trademarks for the term Tribal Chief and Dirty Dom, and these trademarks were filed for the use on merchandise and for the use in broadcasts. In 2018, WWE began its lucrative and controversial deal with Saudi Arabia that saw that April's Greatest Royal Rumble, and WWE has hosted shows in the nation ever since. Next month, WWE will return for its Crown Jewel event, which will see the crowning of two Crown Jewel champions in a sign of how close WWE is to the nation. During Fightful Select's Q&A, Sean Ross Sapp was asked about the Saudi deal, saying it is set to last until 2027, with WWE committing to holding two shows per year. Gunter vs. Cody Rhodes and Liv Morgan vs. Nia Jax are two huge matches that'll happen in Riyadh, and stay tuned to see what else is announced for WWE's latest high-profile Saudi show. Now John Cena is a huge name in the world of pro wrestling and beyond, and this week the grappler turned Hollywood megastar revealed a brand new collaboration. On Twitter, Cena shared that he would be working with McDonald's and appearing on a live stream for the popular Kai Sanat to hype up the new Chicken Big Mac. Sure enough, Cena appeared on the stream much to the delight of Kai and those watching his stream, and it was only fitting Cena arrived to his iconic WWE theme song. During the stream, Cena was prepared to enjoy a Chicken Big Mac until Phantom, another popular personality, showed up and taxed the WWE icon by taking his sandwich. The Phantom Tax has become a meme and sees the content creator take food from friends or fellow content creators, and now Cena is the latest name to fall victim to such a tax. Despite this, Cena clearly had a blast on the live stream, which only goes to show how his star power extends far past the squared circle. 
Now, Shinsuke Nakamura has been absent from WWE for much of this year, with his most recent appearance on TV coming during the April 22nd edition of Raw. That match saw Nakamura lose to Sheamus, and he's similarly come up short in dark matches after SmackDown, losing to Braun Strowman and Cody Rhodes. Despite this, Nakamura is not only part of WWE's current tour of the UK that kicked off last night in Cardiff, Wales, but he was in a US title match against LA Knight. The finish saw Knight dodge a running corner kick and hit the BFT for the win, ensuring that the King of Strong Style did not regain the gold he held years ago. This is the fifth match between the two overall, with Knight holding a 3-2 lead over Nakamura, and while the Japanese star is competing off-air, it remains to be seen when he'll be back on TV. In the main event of the Cardiff show, Cody Rhodes put his undisputed WWE title on the line against Solo Sokoa, and in a rematch from SmackDown's USA debut, this was a steel cage match. Both men received loud reactions from the crowd, and in arguably the spot of the night, Rhodes hit a flying Cody cutter on Sokoa from the side of the cage. Despite the structure, the bloodline interfered as Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa slammed the door in Cody's face, but DIY stopped them from climbing into the cage. The two teams brawled to the back as Cody finished solo off with a triple crossroads for the pin, and the American Nightmare stood tall at WWE Live in Cardiff. After months of rumors and speculation, AEW officially secured a multi-year media rights deal with Warner Brothers Discovery, reportedly worth $555 million over three years. This new deal will see Dynamite and Collision remain on TBS and TNT, solidifying their importance on WBD programming, but AEW Rampage is not part of the new agreement. Rampage, which has faced declining ratings, and True TV were both absent from the announcement, and AEW has shared that Rampage will air its last episode at the end of 2024. This is a huge change to AEW's lineup, and has had fans wondering what will happen to another regular of AEW programming, Battle of the Belts. While speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, Brian Alvarez revealed that AEW's new deal does not include Battle of the Belts, leaving the future of the long-running special uncertain. Battle of the Belts 11 took place back in July and saw Dustin Rhodes and the Von Erichs win the vacant ROH six-man tag team titles in a feel-good moment for all involved. Battle of the Belts has given fans countless solid matches, even if title changes are exceptionally rare, and there will be plenty of disappointed fans if it gets cancelled. Ultimately, the fate of Battle of the Belts remains uncertain, so we'll have to see if it'll eventually make its way back to AEW programming, or joins Rampage and gets shelved. Do you feel AEW's Battle of the Belt series will continue despite it not being part of the new media rights deal? Let us know in the comments section below. Speaking of media deals, AEW recently secured a lucrative deal with Fox Sports Mexico, which will see all of AEW's programming and special events aired by the network. This will only strengthen AEW's presence in the Latin American market, and the effects of this deal are already being felt on TV. On Wrestling Observer Radio, it was shared that AEW plans to include more lucha matches due to their new deal with Fox Sports Mexico. One example of this is the 2 out of 3 falls match featuring Hologram and Mortos at AEW Wrestle Dream, which was done to appeal to the Fox Sports Mexico audience. Do you believe AEW's emphasis on lucha matches will continue to build their reputation in the Mexican market eventually? Give your thoughts on this down in the comments. And we're ending with Tony Schiavone, who has been part of AEW for years now, and on the Wrestle Dream Post Show Media Scrum, the voice of the company gave an update on his future. Speaking highly of the new media deal, Schiavone said he looks forward to being with AEW for four or five years to come, confirming his role as an all-elite broadcaster for the long term.